Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church estimate it in how many know we need to overestimate the Lord? How many know you can't overestimate the Lord, but you need to put all your estimation in the Lord, amen? Not on the devil, not on yourself, and then you'll be doing good. But I want to expose the enemy today, man. That's my number one goal is I want to expose the tactics of the enemy. I don't declare and proclaim to be a master of who the devil is or who Satan is, but I don't declare to be ignorant of his devices either. Amen. I know the only true master of who the enemy is, is God. And therefore we need to get our source of information from the Lord. Amen. But I want to talk to you about something that he's up to and it is hijacking God's word. The devil is trying to hijack God's word. Amen. What is hijacking? Hijacking is to steal by stopping a vehicle on the highway, coercing the pilot at gunpoint, kidnap or rob, subject to extortion or swindling. How many know that's what the enemy wants to do with the Bible that's inside of us, with the word of God that's in us, with the faith that we have? He wants to hijack the word of God from us. Amen? How many of you know that a hijacker is more likely to steal something that he sees there's a value in it? In other words, if you're driving a beater car and it's uh, putt-putting and it's got a flat tire and it's all rusted and it looks like the Flintstones vehicle, how many of you know the hijackers might not home in on that? But if you're like Michael Jordan and you bought your dad a brand new Cadillac of high value, how many of you know that after Michael Jordan bought his dad a Cadillac, he was hijacked for that Cadillac because they saw the value in it and they killed him over that car. He got hijacked for that car because they saw a value in it. How many of you know the enemy sees a value in your mind? Your mind is the vehicle that I want to talk about. And he's going to try to hijack the word of God in your vehicle. And he sees that your mind has a high value. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk to you about hijacking God's word. Amen. How many of you know the devil tries to hijack you from coming to church? He tries to hijack your time or try to hijack you so that you're late from church so that you miss what God had for you. Amen. He don't mind you doing all the things of the world, but when it comes to the word of God, he is trying to hijack it from you. The enemy uses reverse psychology with God's word. Okay, I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Everyone knows what reverse psychology is. That means that you say something and you really want the opposite to take place. Okay, so in other words, he will keep telling you that this bottle is bad if he wants you to drink it. So he keeps saying, oh, this bottle is bad, this bottle is bad, this bottle is bad. And what he's doing is he's telling you the opposite of what he wants you to do. All right, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit. The enemy uses reverse psychology with God's word. I can see it taking place by using people that are used by the enemy to represent God's word so that it pushes us farther away from God's word rather than to work God's word because we don't want to be associated with people who are doing the wrong things. What is the enemy trying to hijack? The enemy is trying to hijack the rainbow, yep. right? The rainbow was given to us, the church, as a covenant, a promise of God's love and a covenant that he would not destroy the earth with water. So what does the enemy want to do? He wants to hijack the rainbow. Right. He wants to hijack the word love. He wants to hijack the word hate. He wants to hijack the word judge. And I come to tell you today, I ain't letting the devil hijack nothing. You can't have the word hate. You can't have the word love. You can't have the rainbow. You can't get nothing. I'm not giving up anything in the word of God to the enemy. I'm not letting him hijack a single thing. And let me explain a little bit farther in case you didn't understand. 
The Bible says in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we see that the position of God is that he loves the world. Now, when we are talking about the world, what exactly is it we're talking about? We're talking about mankind in general. God loved mankind so much that he died for it. The Bible also says no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Amen. So God saw potential in man, and he made man a way of escape by dying on the cross for them. Okay, so here I can see that the word love is so powerful that the enemy tries to steal the word love and drag it through the dirt so much that you see homosexuals posting and bragging about the rainbow. You see homosexuals putting love. You see the homosexuals quoting this Bible verse. You see drunken people at football games with their shirt off, drunk as a skunk, with John 3, 16 on their, their naked, abominable, hairy chest. Drunk as a skunk talking about, for God so loved the world. And they use that word love as an excuse to sin or justify anything that they want to do. And so what happens is Christians who have eyes to see and ears to hear, they actually associate now the word love with sinners. And the enemy is trying to use reverse psychology so that the church now draws back and doesn't want to be associated with the word love. And I'm trying to tell you that it is a trick of the enemy. And I got to tell you, I'm not drawn back from the word love. Devil, you can't have it. I'm not drawn back for it. And now I can see there are Christians battling as, as you preach to the lost. And how are you to preach to the lost? Should you shower the, the homosexuals as they're marching down the, the street? Should you just shower them with love and tell them God loves you and God loves you? Here's the thing. You have someone that is raping, murdering, killing, and while they're doing it, not feeling guilty, proud about it, and you're telling them that God loves them, is that likely to cause them to repent? And you keep telling them God loves them. No, now here's the trick thing. On the flip side, most of those people that were in that parade and the homosexual parade, I want to say the homosexuals, I read on the website that over 60% of the homosexuals, they have been raped and molested. And they've been wounded. And here they are manifesting reverse psychology. They're doing the thing that they hate that was done to them. And they were wounded. And now you have ignorant people trying to celebrate wounded people using reverse psychology, causing the people to go farther away from God. Now, should you tell the person that God hates them over and over and over? Well, if you tell them that God hates them over and over, well, they're going to quit and give up on God and push away from God. So my point is this, is that we don't need to tell people it's not about love or hate. Please hear what I'm saying. If you tell them God hates them, that's not helping them because the greater truth is that they hate God, not that God hates them. And if you tell them that God loves them, that's not helping them either. It's not about love or hate. It's about God's truth that they need to repent and get right with God. And you need to warn them that they're already condemned. And so i got to tell you that the devil is going to try to hijack God's word through reverse psychology. And I understand people don't want to be associated with love, 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 love. Why? Because you see all these wicked sinners using it all the time. But I'm telling you this, I'm not giving the enemy nothing. Amen. I'm not, he can't take it, he can't have it, nothing. So let me say it a little bit farther. So now you can see a lot of Christians, when they're ministered, they're going to hold back on certain scriptures. And, the, and, and then you see the trick of the enemy is try to get the Christian in a corner where now he can't even say the whole Bible. Do you hear what I'm saying? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And, and there's so many Christians now, they don't even want to associate with the scripture now. Do I want, you don't hear it being quoted anymore. Because so many of the enemy's people have taken it way out of context. Using it as an excuse to sin, and that's not true. For God has sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Devil, you can't have that scripture. 
You can't have it. I'm not giving you nothing. And look a little farther. It says, it is impossible to judge what's already judged before our birth. Now, you're going to see there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, well, you're condemning these people. And I got to say, I, I understand what you're trying to say, but the truth of the matter is you cannot condemn someone who's already condemned before you even met them. And what am I saying? In John 3, 18, it says, He that believeth on him, do you see this? He that believeth on him is not condemned. So in other words, when we believe in Jesus Christ, through our faith in Jesus Christ, not of good works, at least any man should boast, we are not condemned because we're putting our faith in Jesus and we've repented of our sins. But it says, but he that believeth not is already, what? Condemned already. Do you see that? So we're not making a judgment on someone that's already been judged by God. We're simply agreeing with the judgment that God already did, and the devil's going to try to use reverse psychology into guilt, making us feel guilty that we're agreeing with God's word. And then we don't want to associate with these things. How many of you know there is a balance to the word of God? There's a balance, and the devil wants to tip us over to either extremes that we're obsessed with, uh, with hate or we're obsessed with love. How many know not everything is a matter of love or hate? And the devil tries to get us into one extreme or the other. How many know I see you, devil? I'm not going there. You can't take me. You ain't going to hijack the word, either one of them. You ain't gonna, how many know the devil wants us to be on defense mode 24-7, having to explain what love is about according to the Bible, or having to explain what hate is according to the Bible? How many know I'm not wasting my energy and time on the defense mode, constantly trying to explain the word of God, casting pearls before swine? How many know the devil is just trying to hijack? He's trying to hijack God's word. And look at what it says. It says, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, in my humble opinion, when I minister to people, I'm not showering them with hate, and I'm not showering them with love. I'm not doing either one. I'm going to simply tell them that if they don't repent of their wicked deeds, they are on their way to hell. Amen. And I'm going to stress that. You can't push me into speaking on behalf of God and saying that God hates them or God loves them. I'm not going there with you. But I can see that Jesus died not for no reason. He died because he loved the world. And he didn't die so that people can continue in their sin and brag about it. You ain't going to hijack God's word from me like that. Right. You ain't going to do that. Don't let the enemy push you anywhere. Let hold the Holy Spirit lead you into the truth. Amen. And the truth will set you free. Because I can see now a lot of Christians, they're not going to want to. You know what? I might come to church wearing a big old rainbow. <laughs> Just because. I'm not, I'm not going to be bound. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to steal the rainbow. Amen. I ain't do. I might put, Joseph had a coat of many colors, a rainbow. Don't let the devil take nothing. Don't let the devil hijack his word. Amen. And I got to tell you, for those of you that are living godly in Christ, don't let the devil shame you with the words of love and hate and judge. Don't, don't even go there. In fact, recognize that the enemy is trying to hijack the word of God and go in a whole different direction. Don't even address it. Don't even try to explain what love is. Don't even try to explain what hate is. Take them to the scriptures. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So again, the greater truth is that the people who are living in sin and proud and don't want to repent, the greater truth is that they hate God. But they think that they love God because they never met God. They don't know God. And they certainly don't know the God of the Bible. Can I move forward? The devil has to take us up to hijack God's word from us. 
What do I mean by up? In order for the devil to steal God's word, he has to lift us up in pride. The more proud we are, the more likely we are to be hijacked by the enemy. And let me show you what I'm saying. The devil has to take us up to hijack God's word from us. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 5. Now you can see that the devil was looking for Jesus at the weakest point when he was fasted and he was hungry. And then what he's trying to do what? When he's at the weakest point, he's trying to hijack the word of God. And look at what it says. It says, the devil taketh him up. Right? The devil's going to try to take you up in this world. He's going to try to lift you up in pride so that he can steal or hijack God's word. Do you see that? He's going to try to hijack not just in your personal life, but in everything surrounding you. He's going to try to hijack into the school systems. He's going to hijack into the political system. He's going to hijack in your family and your kids. He's trying to hijack his way everywhere. Please believe that. And I'm going to show you some cases of how the enemy has tried to hijack God's word in the past, in the present, and what he's going to try to do in the future. It says, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and stand unto him and said, if thou be the son of God. Do you see how the enemy was trying to hijack his identity he was trying to hijack who he was he was the son of god he was the messiah he was the firstborn of the father brought down from heaven came down to this earth to die on the cross rose again from the grave three days later and the devil was trying to hijack who he was how many of you know the devil's going to try to hijack your identity so he could hijack your purpose and hijack your calling and hijack your destination? Sister Madeline agrees. The devil taketh him up on the holy city and setteth him onto the pinnacle of the temple. How many of you know, the, look at what it says, the devil taketh him up into the holy city. How many of you know the devil can try to use your ministry to cause you to be proud? Do you see that? It says he set them on the pinnacles of the what? The temple. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, and right here you see the devil trying to hijack God's word. He, the devil's quoting a scripture. When, when, when you deal with the lost people, the unsaved people, the unrepentant sinners, they will quote more scriptures than a lot of people in church. They know the scriptures and they twist them like a pretzel, an Auntie Anne's. It said, if you be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, at least at any time they shall dash thy foot against the stone. Do you see him trying to hijack? Look here, if the devil, the, the Satan, if he's going to try to hijack the word of God from Jesus, what do you think he's going to do to us? Oh, he's coming for us. Do you see that? If he had so much audacity, to try to hijack the word of God from, from God, from Jesus. How much more is he coming for us? Quoting scriptures. That the angels should protect you, at least you dash your foot over. How, what, that has nothing to do with going up on the top of the, the building and jumping off. There's no connection. It's simply saying that God has assigned angels to watch over his anointed ones, that he will protect them. That doesn't mean they should jump off buildings. Do you see how out of context that has nothing at all to do with anything? But yet he still had the audacity and the attempt to say it. And it says at least 
Any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In other words, the, Jesus ain't letting the devil hijack anything. My question to you is, what are you going to allow the devil to hijack from you? Are you going to allow the devil to box you in a corner where you only quote a couple scriptures? Or are you going to allow the, the Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to free you? He said, I come to give you life and that much more abundantly. How many of you know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty? I'm not getting boxed into two scriptures. The Bible and the whole Bible is for us. Amen? The devil uses the kingdoms of this world to hijack God's word from our heart. Now, what does that mean? The devil's going to try to get in the police. He's going to try to get into the city council, Parma in particular. He's going to try to get into the White House. He's going to try to get in all aspects of life. The Bible says we battle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I've got to tell you something that I did not seek out to go to a certain source for this information. God just kind of led it to me. One of the people at my work, one of my patients, he has a job where he's working on the roof of what's called the House of Wills, right? And the House of Wills used to be a Messianic building from the 33rd degree Mason. It used to be a Messianic temple. And then they took that building and they turned it into a funeral parlor. And then they lost it because they were caught up into fraud. And then after that, a person, which I'm not going to give the devil any platform. I'm not going to allow him to hijack the platform that God gave me. How many know the devil's trying to hijack the platform that God gave you? He's going to try to go on your Facebook, your email, your YouTube, and he's going to try to get into controversial things and cause confusion to hijack what God gave you. I see it happen all the time. People are trying to contradict the word of God on my Facebook. Well, I delete it because I ain't letting the devil hijack the platform that God gave me. I don't care if it's only three people. I ain't letting them hijack the three people that God gave me. They can't have nothing. Amen. So on that note, an unknown person that nobody cares about or knows anything about him, they call him a high priest, right? He's a high priest of a church, a satanic church. And I'm not going to even say the name of the church because I tried to do some research on this person. Nobody knew or cared about this person until he bought this house of wills and it was only then that his name even became relevant at all and if i were to guess the devil always tries to make himself bigger than what he is and he tries to puff himself up and so this person i believe because no one cared about his satanic church no one cared about him it wasn't until he bought this worthless piece of garbage building that his name even became relevant so what i did is i went onto this person's website okay and I want, to say, I want to show you something what the enemy's up to. I printed it out just in case they tried to change it. Sister Julie, you feel like reading something for me? Come on up here. Okay, you guys can see right here it says join us, right? Look who the Church of Satan is trying to get to join. What does this say, Church? All right, we're going to have Sister Julie read this. this. You can see this is from the Church of Satan, right? And this is all part of the website. You see it right there? Yep. And read that part right there. Yep. We are looking for either a teacher or someone involved directly with teaching in the public school system in Kentucky. As you may know, Kentucky public schools can now offer Bible classes and social studies curriculum. If they could do it, so can we. So we are seeking people on the inside of the Kentucky school system who would be interested in helping. If this is you, please drop us a line. And you don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. <laughs> All right. You see that though, right? Yeah. So I'm not making that up. I want you guys to see some. So let me tell you what I think about this. Amen. 
I'm not letting the devil hijack anything. So God let me come across that, right? It talks about teacher right here. You can see it right here, teacher. They're trying to find teachers to go right into the public school system, whether you can see it or not, it's on there. And I'm not encouraging you to go to uh, even, because he probably makes money every time you view the website. But uh, I'm not trying to uh, glorify anything with the devil. But here's the thing, I'm simply showing you how the devil is trying to hijack even in the public school system. You have a high priest of the Church of Satan who's recruiting teachers. Recruiting teachers to go, because now the Kentucky public school system has now legalized doing uh, Bible study classes in their curriculum. And so now you have a, a satanic high priest who's recruiting people to send them into that curriculum and teach the Bible. And the exact same thing is happening in the churches, which is why you'll see a lot of churches that look to be a great movement of God is actually being led by high priests of the devil. They know the scriptures, they know the Bible, and what they're trying to do is twist it. That's where that doctrine comes, once saved, always saved. They're trying to tell you that you can live in sin and not repent and do whatever you want. It's a lie from the devil. The devil's trying to hijack. So then I asked the Lord, I said, God, why did you allow me to see this? Because believe me, I gotta tell you, I'm not trying to brag and try to make myself sound important, but I'm a busy person. All right, and I don't have time to waste and allow the devil to hijack my time. So then I, I, I told you how the Lord led me from one thing to the other, and I went on the website. How many know the devil is hoping that no Christians find out the enemy's plan? Well, God just showed me that enemy's plan. So am I just going to sit here and preach about it? No. I went and called the Kentucky public school system, and I sent them a copy of the email, and I showed them what they're up to. Now, whatever they choose to do with that information is between them and God, but at least I warned them. How many know the devil tries to operate in the shadows? He tries to operate in the dark, and he's trying to pretend like he has nothing to do with Christianity. He's trying to pretend like he has nothing to do with the Bible, but that's a lie. I got to tell you, all those satanic churches, what they proclaim to be and what they actually are, are not the same thing. And they try to disassociate themselves with the devil and to saying it's two different enemies. It's not true. It's not true. I want to talk to you about hijacking God's word. See, God will raise up certain people to find out what the devil's up to and block the enemy. Block them. If you know, if you work for the Kentucky school system and now you know that your, your state and your school system is now being targeted, you're going to look twice before you hire someone. You're going to do an extra background check and start looking and start. So now I've heard on the news, because I didn't even know that they were teaching the Bible in the Kentucky school system through this. I found out through that website that they were teaching the Bible. And then I, found, I had to call them to find out if it was true. I had to Google to see if there was news reporting. It is. And now in that school system, you have teachers trying to stop the, the students from reading the Bible. They're trying to block it. They're trying to hijack. Well, now I understand because the Satanists are trying to infiltrate it. And that's what you can see happening in all the church, not all churches, but in a lot of churches to hijack their way into church. And this is not done with a demon that doesn't know what he's doing, using a person who doesn't know. These are people who are spiritual predators who are intentionally trying to hijack God's word, who are just intentionally trying to cause confusion in God's house. And then you'll see the devil trying to hijack the word judge. The Bible says a tree will know by the fruit it bears. So in other words, I have to judge the fruit. If I don't see the tree bearing the fruit of God, then I need to know that it is not of God. And hence my point, the devil uses the kingdoms of this world to hijack God's word from my heart. Do you see where I'm saying? Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Old Brooklyn.
Franklin Christian Church.